Hi, I'm Carol Butler. I'm Chief of Collections here at the National Museum of Natural History at the Smithsonian Institution. That's a great question, and I'm frequently asked that. We collect objects and specimens to keep a record of the world around us and the people who live in it and how people and that natural world interact together. Uh, I think that's a really important thing to do because the world around us is changing and we as scientists and scholars want to understand our world and want to understand everything that makes us human. We also collect objects and specimens as a result of um, the wishes of donors who want us to hold the things that have been important in their families or in their cultures or in their, to their scientific research. They ask us to hold these things in trust for the American people. Collections also um, make a document of places that have changed. Sometimes you lose a certain piece of land to an earthquake or to a tsunami or to some other national, natural disaster or it changes because of development. So collections from that location can be very important to show what was. Now why do we digitize them? We digitize collections to make them accessible for research purposes and also for the general public. So we're digitizing collections to make them accessible, and we're also digitizing them because it helps us to manage them. Managing 126 million things is a big job, and we take it very seriously because we know that we are managing the, these collections for the next 100 years and the 100 years that follows beyond. Well, 100 years is one of my rules of thumb for the preservation standards we have for the collections. We aim to ensure that collections are preserved so that 100 years from now they are equally valuable and researchable, so to speak, um, for science because they have not degraded or lost any of their um, scientific value through time. So 100 years for me is, um, is a goal for what I need to do to preserve the collections for the future. A hundred years in the future, I think we will have done a lot of work with understanding DNA and the genetic um, components of biological collections that were studied morphologically in the past. Uh, that, that's changing now and it has been for at least the last decade. I think in 100 years we will have studied a lot more about things that are very, very small, very small insects and invertebrates that live in the soils and that live in the oceans. I think we have a reasonably good understanding of large animals and large plants, but I think we will learn a lot more about things that are very small and I think that's pretty exciting because those very small things uh, the small organisms play a, a really critical role in our ecosystems and in helping to maintain an environment that we can live in and hopefully we won't change it so much that they can't live in it.